How is it that Man City always find a way of overloading any midfield, and outnumbering any defence in the blink of an eye? Well, that's because they're reliant on a system that first made its appearance nearly 100 years ago. A system that defies the concept of a formation. An increasingly discussed topic in football is whether formations are still an accurate way of describing a team's structure. While a team may line up as a 4-3-3 on paper, they may never actually resemble this shape, and the players will constantly shift their positioning depending on a number of different factors. But regardless of whether it's a 4-3-3, 3-4-3 or 4-2-3-1, some of the best teams in Europe are now going back to a structure that first appeared in the 1920s. And that structure is the WM. Whether it's Guardiola, Arteta or Xavi, the WM has made its way back into elite football. But its use today is completely different from its origin. And in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at why it's the perfect system for the modern game. Welcome back to Football Meta. All stats in this video are brought to you by Sockham, an in-depth team and player analysis platform. Click the link in the description down below to get started. Now, before we take a look at how it's used today, let's first touch on the origin of the WM formation. Football has changed drastically over the past century, but the introduction of the WM formation came at a time of revolution for the sport. In the 1920s, the most common documented lineup was the 2-3-5 but a shift in the offside rule meant it was easier for the attackers to remain onside. This meant you could commit more players to the attack, while also requiring an extra defender at the back to stop this new threat. This instantly had an impact in how the game was played, with the average goals per game going from 2.6 to 3.7 the following season. After a period of trial and error, balance was found with two more central players, and thus the 3-2, 2-3 was born. Games became increasingly stretched, and more fluid passing movements gave way to longer, more direct styles of play, with counter-attacks and long balls taking the center stage. Herbert Chapman's Arsenal were widely considered as the most effective at using this system, and their success with it is arguably why it became commonplace in world football. In the modern game, while the system may be similar to that of the 1920s, the philosophy behind it is completely different. The long counter-attacking nature of football in the 1930s meant that the team would often be split into two separate groups, with the five attacking set of players facing off against the five defenders. But football is no longer played like that, and modern tactics require shapes that allow teams to create overloads in specific areas of the pitch. And the WM is an excellent way of doing that. It makes it easier to understand by ignoring the separate W and M, but by linking the two with this box shape in the center. The key word to describe this system is control. It's a shape that allows teams to maintain control of the center, while also having coverage between the lines and out wide. This box is incredibly difficult to cover, as it nearly always requires the opposition to shift their defensive shape, often exposing other areas the team can quickly move down. And if they choose to ignore it, it can quickly overrun any back line. So to get a better understanding of its main advantages, let's take a look at how it works during build-up and why it's so effective in the final third. The initial 3-2 pattern during build-up gives the team a lot of passing options. However, unless playing in a 3-4-3, it's a shape that does require some rotation for it to be formed. And depending on the manager, it can be done in a number of different ways. One of the most common methods popularized by Guardiola is through the inverted fullback moving inside, with the other three defenders playing in a wider position, allowing the two box-to-box -box midfielders to push up between the lines. This season, Arteta has been using this rotation frequently, with Zinchenko or Tierney moving in alongside Partey, with Xhaka and Odegaard playing in a more advanced position. Other managers, such as Xavi, form this box by having Gavi move inside from the left wing position, freeing up the flank for Balde to push up and act as a winger. This means Barcelona have their four best ball players in a more dangerous position, whilst also isolating their quicker players in a 1v1 with the opposition's fullback. However, one of the main differences in this structure compared to its origin is the use of the goalkeeper. And during the first phase of build-up, the initial 3-2 is now often formed with the goalkeeper acting as an outfield player, which gives teams an extra player in attack to work with. Here's an example from Arsenal's recent match against West Ham. The M structure formed with Ramsdale and the two centre-backs, with the two pivots being Tierney and Partey, with Xhaka and Odegaard completing the box in the centre. This means Arsenal can push their other fullback further up the pitch, stretching the midfield and looking to create gaps for central passes into the box-to-box -box midfielders. Thanks to Arsenal using Ramsdale, the free player is often the fullback, or even Gabriel Jesus, 
who has the liberty to roam and pick up positions to help the team progress, often deserting the centre of the pitch. The extra man is why this shape now works well in modern tactics, and recently Guardiola has been leaning into this system more frequently, with the 3-2-4-1 formation being used on multiple different occasions. An excellent example is in their quarterfinal clash with Bayern Munich, in which their centre-back John Stones started as a second pivot alongside Rodri. With Stones in this more advanced position, it was an excellent way of countering Bayern Munich's press. As if they went man for man with the back three, Stones could move back into the defensive line, forming a back four, freeing up this space for either Gundogan or De Bruyne to occupy, with Haaland also being a lot more active during build-up. However, thanks to Edison, Man City could maintain this shape in the centre and have Ake act as a fullback rather than a wide centre-back, meaning Man City could effectively attack around Bayern's central block and find space to move it forward. Now, moving slightly further up the pitch into a more active build-up position, it's in this scenario that it can quickly and unexpectedly create opportunities. Firstly, the 3-2 structure at the back is excellent at providing cover and stopping any eventual counter-attacks. But more importantly, it remains an excellent shape for building attacks from. In the opposition's half, similarly to build up, the two key players and the ones that create the most disruption are the box to box midfielders. Their positioning is usually not pressed on the back line, but in the space between the lines. Meaning, if they receive the ball, one of the defenders has to step out to intercept. If it's the centre back, then the striker has space to attack in behind. If it's the full back, then the winger has space to attack forward. We can see that clearly in this clip here, with Man City beating the press, forming this box shape in the centre and outnumbering Bayern Munich's midfield. De Bruyne has space to receive the ball, drags the centre back out of place and now Haaland can move into this space that was vacated. A difficult pass from Gundogan was subsequently intercepted, but it's clear to see how quickly it can create gaps. Here's another example from Barcelona's recent match against Elche. Elche are playing with a back five in an attempt to counter the eventual front five that Barcelona would create. But this clip is an excellent example of how it can still create space very quickly. We can see the 3-2-2-3 structure, with Ansu Fati in the space between the lines. As the centre-back is dragged out of position, it frees up space for Lewandowski to attack, and simultaneously frees up space for Fati to attack and overlap their position. Some last-ditch defending was enough to stop this move but it remains a good example of why this shape is so dangerous, as these players between the lines are crucial for disrupting the defensive line. So, as we can see, it's very effective at controlling the pitch, and when entering the opposition's half, it can very easily create overloads. During more structured attacks, the shape can very quickly transition into a more aggressive 2-3-5 that can outnumber the back line. The striker and two midfielders usually hold a tighter, more central position, forcing the back line to cover this central overload, freeing up space out wide for the wingers. Alternatively, the tight front three could be formed with the wingers and the striker, while the width could be given by the fullbacks. Either way, keeping a 3-2-2-3 structure as a reference allows teams to quickly transition into any other shape that quickly outnumbers the back line, whilst also being ready for any potential counterattacks. Finally, this shape is one of the main reasons why both Man City and Arsenal create a lot of opportunities from cutbacks. The five players on the back line mean that they constantly have players ready to attack the half spaces, either with longer passes into the channel from the centre back, or from the winger with the midfielder underlapping. As the ball is played into this position, it's incredibly difficult to stop, as the priority is to stop a ball across goal, often leaving this space open for the other three attackers to run onto. The stats back this up, and by taking a look at Sokerman's match reviews, both Arsenal and Man City's expected threat heat maps clearly highlight these spaces as areas of increased chance creation, showing how they constantly have players ready to attack this position in the half space. If you want access to Sokerman's unique match previews and reviews, then make sure to click the link in the description down below. And there you have it, while the game keeps developing and adapting, today's video is proof that even the oldest of tactics can find their way back into modern football. Although I'm not sure I'm ready for 4-4-2 hoofball just yet. Let me know what you think of this offensive shape in the comments down below, and what shape do you think will soon become the meta. So in this video we touched on a number of different topics relating to offensive tactics, but if you want a breakdown of the best defensive tactics in the modern game then make sure to check out this video here. As always, if you enjoy this content, then please leave a like and subscribe for more. Thanks for watching.